Kia ora team, welcome back to the 2.3 gas exchange series. This is video 7. In this video you'll be learning about what the ecological niche of cricket means for gas exchange and how the tracheal system is ventilated and carries out gas exchange. By the end of this lesson you should be able to describe the ecological niche of the cricket and describe ventilation and gas exchange in the cricket tracheal system. So crickets belong to the insect taxonomic group. They are terrestrial animals, which means they live on land, and their source of oxygen is air, which has 21% oxygen. Also, we learned in previous videos that air is dry, so insects are very susceptible to desiccation or drying out. And as a matter of fact, because insects are so small compared to mammals, they have a high surface area to volume ratio, and this means they are way more susceptible to drying out faster than mammals. Air also contains debris, which may clog or block the airways. Now crickets have a high metabolic demand, which means they need a lot of energy to carry out necessary activities to survive. And these activities are like flying away from predators because flying is a vigorous activity. It needs a lot of energy. And also, crickets need to make those distinctive mating calls. So male crickets stroke their wings against each other to attract female crickets. And these wing stroke behaviors require a lot of energy. There's a really good video on my website that shows exactly how crickets make these sounds. So I recommend that you watch that video as well. So the cricket's gas exchange system needs to be as efficient as possible to obtain enough oxygen from air to meet these high metabolic demands. Crickets have a tracheal system. I couldn't find a decent picture of a cricket tracheal system, but here's a clear picture of the tracheal system in grasshoppers. So the tracheal system consists of the following structures. Spiracles, tracheal tubes, tracheoles, and air sacs. Spiracles are pores on the exoskeleton, or the outside skin, or the shell of the cricket. Spiracles can open or close to control ventilation or airflow into the tracheal system. Spiracles are directly connected to the relatively large tubes called the trachea. One trachea is called the trachea, and insects have a network of these trachea. The trachea then branch off into many tracheoles that further branch into narrower and narrower tracheoles. These tracheoles extend to every cell or every tissue of the body. The very tips of these tracheoles are the specialized respiratory surface of the tracheal system. This is where gas exchange occurs, directly between inhaled air and the body cells. The tracheal system is different from the lung system and the gill system because it takes oxygen directly into the tissues of the body. An example of these tissues are like the muscle tissues. If you don't know what tissues are, they're groups of similar cells. So like a group of muscle cells is called muscle tissue. Another thing to note is that unlike mammals and fish, insects do not have a closed circulatory system that pumps oxygenated blood around the body. Instead, they have an open circulatory system, but this open circulatory system has no role in gas exchange and transporting oxygen and carbon dioxide. So in the insects, the circulatory system plays no role in gas exchange. Here's another picture of a different insect's tracheal system. Insects take in air through the spiracles that are along the sides of their body. Here's a spiracle here, here's another, here's another, here's another spiracle, another spiracle, one here, one here, and one there. These spiracles open into the relatively wide tubes called the trachea. So here's a trachea right here, and it extends along the entire um, length of the insect. The trachea branch everywhere, 
amongst the organs and tissues, and they keep branching into these branches called tracheals. So if it's a wide tube, it's likely to be a trachea, but if it's a smaller or narrower tube, they're definitely tra tracheals. Tracheals then keep branching out until they reach all of the tissues in the cells of the body. The tracheals are the specialized respiratory surfaces of the tracheal system. Here are some more pictures of the different parts of the tracheal system. You can see that spiracles, like here, 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 and here, and here's a close-up of a spiracle. They're the pores on the exoskeleton, on the skin of the insect. And in this picture, this one here, you can see that there are tiny hairs that line the inside of the spiracle. Spiracles are directly connected to the trachea network. And they're relatively wide when you compare them to the much narrower tracheoles. So here's a really good example. Here's the trachea network, or there's one trachea here, and it branches off into many tracheoles. And here's a relatively large tracheal, but you can see that the tracheal keeps branching and branching and branching until we can't see it with our eyes anymore. There's extensive branching of the airways so that air can reach all of the tissues and cells of this insect's body. In this picture here, you can clearly see stripes or rings around the trachea. These rings are called chitin rings. They prevent the trachea from collapsing into itself, kind of like the cartilage rings around our tracheas. And finally, there are these air sacs, these air bags. They're like airbag extensions of the trachea. Flying insects like crickets have these air sacs to increase the volume of air they take in during ventilation. So how are the tracheals ventilated? It's all written out here, but I'd like to describe ventilation using the pictures in the next slide. Usually during ventilation, air flows into and out of the cricket's body through open spiracles by diffusion. The airflow is regulated by small muscles that operate these valves within each spiracle. So here's the spiracle and inside it you can see there's two valves that open and close. The muscles contract to close the spiracles. The muscles relax to open the spiracles. From the spiracles, air diffuses along the trachea, the trachea network, from the trachea, they then go down the tracheals until they finally reach a cell or the tissues of the body. No new air can flow into the tracheal system when the spiracles are closed. Air can only flow in by diffusion if the spiracles are open. Now here's one large air sac. Air sacs increase the volume of air that can be taken in by the cricket which can become useful when the spiracles are closed and there's no new airflow. To increase the rate of ventilation during high energy activities like flying, crickets can actually make rhythmic body movements to help actively ventilate their respiratory surface, the tracheals. So rhythmic body movements are literally like pumping of the body and they compress and they expand the air sacs like bellows. A bellow is this thing here which was used back in the day, I think, to keep a fire going. So these rhythmic body movements help to draw more air into the trachea and tracheals at a faster rate. And this increased ventilation only happens when crickets make rhythmic body movements during high energy activities. In all other times, ventilation happens via simple diffusion. Awesome, so you've made it to the end of the video. So by now you should be able to describe the ecological niche of the cricket and describe ventilation and gas exchange in the cricket tracheal system. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.